Okay, I'm going to go ahead and call <clears throat> the regular board of directors meeting for February 27th, 2023 to order. And if you would all please rise and join me in saluting the flag. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And Vice President Schaefer would like you all to sit for the invocation. I have a feeling it's going to be a long one. Is that okay? <laughs> it's not going to be that long. <laughs> Thank you. I think my voice will carry on the, uh, this better than if I stood. I want to take you back to 2022. If you remember 2022, it was a horrible year. Everything went wrong. The nation was falling apart. There were all kinds of problems with bombing, with illness, with COVID, with homelessness. Nothing went right. And we tried to survive, all of us. We walked around with masks on. We worried about everything that if somebody sneezed on an airplane, you just thought that's the end of the world. It was really a scary time. Now, I want to tell you the good part about that year, the year that we thought we had so many problems. We could thank staff because all our staff, whether it be at this building or the building on Wilson Street, were in sync. They made sure they got out all the agendas, they got out all the information, they were there for the board. It was a good year for getting together. Also, it was important that we look at the year and we think, how could it be worse? Well, it got better with the staff being able to do all this. And not only that, but at the helm, the leader of the whole staff is our general manager, Scott. And of course, he did such a good job too. Such a good job that he became the manager of the year for all of California. You know, I can talk about special districts because I know special districts. I go to them all the time and I'm involved with them all the time. And I just want you to know that we have a top district. We have one of the best districts there are in California. So that's to be important. Now, now we're going to switch to, to 2023 and talk about how thankful we are. We're thankful because we have a home to live in, to be go to. And not only that, but we also have a family, a family we love and a family that loves us. And then not only that, but we have food on our table, which a lot of people don't have this. So we take it for granted. And in life, you should not take anything for granted because it's there and then it goes away. So it, it's important to honor and appreciate all that's done in life. I'm just going to leave you with one thought, and that's experience is not what happens to you. It is what you do with that that happens to you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Should have saved that for a Thanksgiving dinner speech. That was really good. <laughs> okay. Madam Clerk, the roll call, please. Director Brett Eccles. Vice Secretary Robert Uten. Here. 
Secretary Arthur Perry. Here. Vice President Arlene Schaefer. Here. President Michael Schaefer. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, any late communications? No, Mr. President. Any ceremonial matters to conduct this evening? No, Mr. President. Thank you. Then we'll go to public comments. Anyone from the public wishing to speak on items not on our agenda this evening will have four minutes to speak. Anyone from the public wishing to speak? The public is shaking its head no. <laughs> Any written public comments? Thank you. Okay, consent calendar. I move. Any items to pull? I move for approval of the consent calendar. No. Second. All those in favor? I'm sorry, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries 4 to 0 with one absence. Uh, no public hearings this evening. So, Scott, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, item number one is uh, receiving a file of fiscal year 2022-23, made your budget review, and Caitlin Tran, our finance manager, will be giving us a report. Hi, Caitlin. It's all yours. Good afternoon, Mr. President and members of the board. In front of you is the mid-year budget review. This analysis report uses the amended budget consisting of the adopted budget plus any approved prior year carryover appropriations, as well as budget adjustment through December 31st. The solid waste fund expenditure has an amended budget of approximately 7.2 million. As of December 31st, a total of 44.2% of the solid waste budget um, was expended. At this time, staff anticipate um, budgetary savings of 418,900 for the fiscal year, mainly due to savings from the organics and recycling tonnage accounts. As for revenue, the total solid waste and general fund revenue budgets for the fiscal year is approximately 6.9 million. As of December 31st, the district received approximately 3.9 million. Um, and this is normal for this time of the year. Um, the wastewater fund expenditure has an amended budget of approximately 5.8 million, and that does not include uh, CIP budget. As of December 31st, a total 52.4% of the wastewater funds operating um, budget has been expended. Staff anticipate a budgetary savings of $47,000 due to reduced cost um, in maintenance and operations. The total wastewater fund revenue budget is approximately $7 million. As of December 31st, the district received approximately 4 million in wastewater revenue. Um, please see the attached report for more detail of each account. Um, and I'm here to uh, answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Caitlin. Bob? Uh, Caitlin, does the, does the revenue include the new fees? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Other questions? All right. If not, we'll receive and file. And thank you for your diligence and hard work, you and your staff. Thank you. This be finished with everything. Wastewater. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks again. Uh, item two, Scott. Thank you, Mr. President. This is a communications plan for the three cart rollout. Will be a tag team. It'll be uh, Nabila Guzman and Gina Terriano. And I do want to mention this will be Nabila's last presentation, last uh, uh, meeting you'll be seeing her uh, as Wednesday's her last day with us. Uh, she is moving on to be the senior administrative analyst in the city of Laguna Beach. Um, so now is the time to, if you have any questions or, you know. I, this is the time we get to grill her. <laughs> Make her feel bad for leaving or something like that. You know, so no. Uh, no, we wish her the best of luck um, in the city of uh, Laguna Beach. And uh, but um, for this, I'm going to turn it over to Nabila and, and Gina uh, on giving this report. All yours, kid. Hmm. Hmm. 
Last month, the Board of Directors approved a First Amendment with CRNR for SB1383 compliance services. One of those services is a transition from a two-cart system to a three-cart system uh, with a planned rollout date of fall 2024. Staff in CRNR have met to discuss a communications plan of that rollout and an operations plan. So when carts would be in stock, trucks, when communications would be rolled out. So attached to the staff report is a logistics communications um, plan that Gina will be going over. All right, thank you. Uh, good evening, members of the board. So we're very proud tonight to share our communications plan for the three cart system rollout. Um, this is a high level overview of our communications goals, strategy, budget, timeline, and performance measures. So I'd like to briefly walk through it uh, and open it up to questions and feedback. Let me take care of this real quick. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Okay, while Nolani figures that out, I'll, <laughs> I'll continue. Um, so to start with our communications goals, um, we set out to determine goals and we wanted to narrow down the key uh, messaging to make sure we answer our customers' biggest questions, um, including how the change will occur, what customers will need to do, and why the change is happening. Um, to clearly communicate the answers to these questions, where we have to share the cart delivery logistics. As you can see on the screen, we will have to <coughs> explain the three cart system and how it works. And we will also have to describe the reasons for the change. Um, as you can see, we have the key details listed here, and we plan to use this as a guide for developing our messages. Next, we compiled uh, common strategies for distributing information through print, digital, and in-person methods. Here you can see that we plan to use our tried and tested communications methods, such as postcard mailings, letters, bill inserts, videos, flyer distributions, social media campaigns, press releases, email campaigns, uh, and town hall meetings. And then when possible, we will translate all communications into Spanish to make sure that we're addressing our community, community members in their preferred language. And we plan to carry out the scope of work shown here with our existing communications consultants, Tripepi Smith, in order to leverage the institutional knowledge that they've built in working with us and also their extensive work related to SB 1383 uh, with us and with other local public agencies like the city of Costa Mesa. On the next page, you can see a breakdown of the budget for this scope of work. These are the same totals that staff provided in your last staff report for the CRNR contract amendment that was, that was approved last month. Uh, the total cost of Tripepi Smith's consulting services for designing, developing content and coordination is $75,000. The cost of print and digital advertising is another $75,000 for a total of $150,000. And as mentioned in the staff report, this has not yet been approved by the board, but staff is planning to include this request in our fiscal year 2023, 24, and 24, 25 biennial budget. And that's going to be brought to the board in June of this year. Next, we put together a timeline for this project, beginning with the review of this plan today, and followed by the extension of the consulting agreement with Tripepi Smith. Um, which uh, we are hoping to 
execute in May of this year. Once the agreement goes into effect on July 1st, we would work with Tripeppy Smith on content development, coordination, and planning all the way through December of this year. Beginning in February of next year, which would be six months before the carts are delivered, we would implement the communications plan, meaning that mailings and letters would be sent out. We would run all the video and social media campaigns. The website would be updated and the town halls would take place all over the course of February through August of next year. During that same time period, letters will be sent to those who were previously exempt from the organics program to let them know that the state no longer allows exemptions. And CRNR will be sending out a mailing to confirm the number of carts that customers have and the cart sizes. All of this will occur prior to the cart delivery in August, um, in August to September of 2024. And then the first date of collection would be Monday, September 30th. Lastly, we put together some met metrics to help determine whether our outreach and ed education is impactful. These include continuing to measure contamination levels, which is required under SB 1383. And now that we have some contamination studies under our belt, we can compare them with the contamination levels after the three cart rollout. Our goal is to have 10% or less contamination in, in each cart. We can also continue tracking our diversion rate on a quarterly basis and continue to strive for 75% diversion. We have yet to get there, but this is the state's goal. So we've kept this as our goal here. In terms of digital reach and engagement, we've also set some measurable goals related to social media, email, website visits, and video views that we believe are achievable and are in line with our prior campaigns over the last few years. And for our town halls, we've set a goal of attracting at least 50 attendees at each event, which is also in line with similar events that we've hosted in the past. So that concludes my report. Happy to answer any questions um, and take any feedback that you have. I had a couple of quick questions, or I think they're going to be questions. Um, town halls, are you going to do them here? Okay. I see a no from Sky. That's I was hoping you would have, say that. We'll have one here, almost like, but we want to spread out through the community. Okay. Like we did very similar like we do with the when we, when we were doing our organic program. Yeah. program. So we had it at strategically different location to see, but we'll, we'll definitely have one here. Okay. Uh, I, I was hoping you would say that because I think getting getting out into the public is going to give us a little bang. Good. Um, I got an email or something. My, I think it was an email today or yet over the weekend from Assemblyman Norris advertising the city's dump day and encouraging mm -hmm. people to take part in that. I think as part of our outreach component, we should reach out to, to Supervisor Foley and to Assembly Member Petrie Norris and ask them to put us on their distribution list. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think a lot of people get that information. Mm -hmm. Those are two sources that people probably identify with more than the five of us, even though I think they voted, some of them voted for us, right? Um, I think that's important. Um, and I, I guess the other thing I'm still hung up with, and Mike, you may, this no exemptions for the light green cart. My dad used to have a saying that it, that's gonna go over like a lead balloon. That's going to go over like a lead balloon. I, I, I just think we need to be really prepared for the backlash. I, I, I'll give you an example. My son lives in Monticello condos, and they have to keep their trash cans in their garage at the end of their garage, right? He's got two solid waste. They, they all have two solid waste cans, I think, in the condo projects. There's no way he's got any room for a light green cart. Um, you know, his cop motorcycle sits in there, and I think that takes up half the garage. Mm -hmm. But I think we need to be really prepared for that. I think we're going to get some resistance mm -hmm. from a lot of people on that. Mm -hmm. Right? We will, which we'll pass on to you, obviously. Um, Even the. Yeah, I think. 
our biggest challenge through all this is not just the communicate. Oh, the part about using the Newport Mesa School District, fantastic. I think that's, again, I've said this a number of times, that's where we're gonna get a lot of good participations from the kids. So I, I'm glad to see that. Did you put up, are we going through the city, city council meetings? That they have the TV that flashes all the time. Uh, that wasn't part of the plan, but we, we can definitely. I mean, that's just thrown out as an idea. There's a lot of people watch those city council meetings. Just a thought. And or go to them. Or go to the meetings or on Zoom. Yeah. And then I had a question, Mike. So CRNR is going to send out the, the information about the size of the cans. Is that correct? Correct. We will be sending out information and we'll be doing our own um, audits. We've already done audits to determine what, uh, how many carts are out there. We'll do um, surveys to see if people want to adjust their cart size and level of service. Ideally with the, with three carts, that's the, that's the intention that maybe they'll sacrifice one of their solid waste carts once they get a recycling cart and most of them already have an organics cart. That's what I'm hoping in the situations like the condos is if they all have two, and I think most of them in that place have the big solid waste or mixed waste carts. Probably. They get rid of one of those and get their blue and their green in there. Mm. I think that'll be a less more palatable for them. We can help with the outreach of doing the right sizing exercise with the residents as well. Great. Are we going to, Scott, there's a question for you. Are we going to change our ordinance? Because some people aren't going to be able to stash those away behind site. You know, that's, I think we need to consider doing that. Sure, we can bring that for discussion. Uh, we, we, want, we want to be consistent with the state regulations, though. So that's, that's you know, uh, Talk another. About in view of the public, because that's what I'm saying. They're not yeah, going to yeah, put two more cans. Yeah, that's true. We, we had that discussion before. You're right. Uh, you remind me. We had a discussion that, um, Maybe we be more lackadaisical if someone puts their trash carts in front on, you know, um, in front of their garage or on the side of the yard where, where it can be seen, right? So that's something, yeah, we would have to come back and amend the, uh, the code for that. So, yeah. Good. Okay, then my last question. When we mail the information out to, are we sending it to the homes or the owners of the properties? We, I, we would, uh, I would think we would send it to the homes because that's just, you know, because we have property owners don't live in our communities, right? And yeah, so exactly. we know them, they're going to, they're not going to pass it on to their homeowners or tenants. So we, we want to, we want to uh, um, address um, uh, people living at the homes that we serve. Yeah. Well, do we, do we bill the property owner or do we do bill the individual renters? So the, the property owner, the property owners get it on their, on their property tax. Yeah. Um, um, I think we need to have a lot of emphasis on, um, you know, this is required by state law, 1383. Um, and, and matter of fact, I think most people, I, I think almost every jurisdiction has three cards except Costa Mesa. Uh, so mo most of the, uh, with the high turnover rate, I mean, that's one of the most frequently asked questions is, why don't we have a resource? So most people come from a place where they're used to it, or they know people. They have friends and relatives in in the in the uh, um, areas where they they're used to three cards. So I think that'll help smooth the transition. But oh yeah, okay. I got one more question. Okay, so the complex that I live in. We have a company comes out every Thursday and does all the green waste cutting and stuff. So those people are still going to be required to get a green waste cart, right? Yes. What we can do is give them like a, a 30 gallon green waste cart and it'd be really for their food waste. They throw the food waste in that cart. I, I, okay. So there's no exception to that. What happens if the uh, complex wants to have a bigger bin for food waste? Um, the complex one has a, a, a big bin dedicated for, for food waste. I know that doesn't make sense, though, does it? No, it's, you're going to have some, some odor issues, I'm sure. Um, and so, no, I think uh, for, for those um, properties that have a private landscaper um, that 
takes away their, their green waste, that's great, but they still got to recycle food scraps. Food scraps cannot still go in the trash. So that's where it That'll goes. So we get them a smaller cart, like a 30 gallon cart, and that should accommodate them. That's the smallest, the 30? Yes. With the lime green, the yeah. 30 gallons of. Yeah, and the blue, they can come in 30 gallons, blue and green. Yes, yes, they can come in different sizes. A blue one, you're gonna probably want a, a larger, um, like a 65 gallon, um, uh, because, uh, you know, those are already, already going in the 65, 90 gallon trash car. Can you get them for 30 though? Sure. Because in my garage, I'm set for 30s with my yeah. cupboards and things. Just, and most of my complex is. Yeah, I, I, I talked to some people in the community and uh, um, the, the city ordinance has them distributing, has the vendors distributing food waste only carts. And they're the same color, I think, as Mike and I know what we're talking about here. You and I have had, had this discussion. But um, at first, they, um, I think at first they were putting um, a green waste in the cart because I think it's a green cart. But anyway, um, you know, after a, a lot of back and forth with, with Mike and the uh, tenant, I looked at the top of it and it's a food waste only cart. And nothing's ever in there now. Um, you know, they, they have been putting green waste in it. Um, it, it I, think, I think we need to be up to speed with what the city is directing the vendors to do. Um, maybe, maybe, um, well, as we go to the town halls, I think we need to be aware of what questions we're going to get. I mean, if, if this lady came to one of our town halls, prior to us discovering it's a food waste only cart, there's going to be, there's going to be a, a lot of opportunity for <laughs> confusion. Um, so I think somebody on staff needs to be pretty much up to speed on what the city's ordinance is. I have a, for the, as we go out and do these town halls, I have a special request of CRNR. I would like our presenters, whoever's doing these, to be able to have those colored lids to show. They don't need the whole can. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, who's going to push those things around to go to it? But if we could get, you, you, you know what I mean, just the lid, and we can say to people, here's what the blue lid looks like, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to leave that on your shoulders. We can easily do that. Yeah. Um, however, if I'm the one going to the town halls, I can fit three of the 32 gallons in my car and we can show the entire cart. I don't want those in your car. I just want the <laughs> lids. <laughs> no, I, think I can the bring carts, just lids. I think the carts are better view. Do you? Yeah, for the people. Yeah. So they can see exactly what they're going to get in a smaller size. And the same thing with all the pictures. I, I'm sure the pictures probably are correct now uh in the information that we're going to to yeah. be putting out yeah. it's always better to be visual right they are for the residential um your residential customers it is co-collected organics and food for larger properties commercial multifamily properties we have food mostly food only and to Earlier, there are some large multifamily properties where they do have a literally a two cubic yard food waste bin. Like, are they using that? So you have to send a second truck there to those locations to get their organics, right? Right, because it's a different truck to pick. Yeah. yeah. Most of those have landscapers that haul away the landscaping waste. And for a large multifamily or apartment complex, a one Two cubic yard is. More question off this topic, but where do they take that green waste when those people, those large complexes, cut the grass and trim the trees? Where do they take that? Where do the landscapers take it? Yes. Most of them take it to um, uh, the place Tierra Verde landscaping. Okay. So that's but one that's location. Just green, again, that's just green waste. I was thinking we could get credit for that. For our percentage, if I knew where he was going with it, I've been thinking about that for a couple of years. But, yeah, I don't know if we can or not, but why not? Is that in Costa Mesa, that Terra Verde? 
Uh, no, it's not in Costa Mesa. No. I think we should get we should get our poundage though. Do they have to report it by jurisdiction? I mean, do they keep track the Costa Mesa residents, Newport Beach? Post up a report when they go there, and then we we track landscaper names um, coming out of Costa Mesa. Do you there track, are do you track the tonnage also? We don't track the tonnage now. Is that possible? Probably not, because they stop in several. A lot of the landscapers stop in different it different cities. Brian. Uh, that's the way to get to 75 percent the city might want to capture your yeah your the city might yeah. want it yeah um it's a good plan i mean you spelled it out i think i think you guys have done a really good job of getting this alliterated so we can understand it and it the plan looks just speaking for me the plan looks good i think i think we're moving how we need to go yeah, one other thing we don't send a bill, though, do we? Because a part of your presentation from that is to send out in their bills. That, with that slide that you had? Yes, I was referring to the Mesa water bill inserts, which is usually what we do. Oh, okay, that's right. Good. Okay. All right, any other questions on this item? Okay, you're not going to get off this easy. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, just as a, as a parting shot. Um, Glad to see you're going to my hometown since I was raised in Laguna Beach. And um, we don't expect you to be on the beach too much, but uh, if your duties call for you to be down on Main Beach, just wear sunscreen, okay? <laughs> Congratulations and, and all the best. Appreciate you. Okay, um, number three. Thank you, Mr. President. This is to consider nominating Vice President Arlene Schaefer as a candidate to serve on CSC's board of directors seat five or seat C for Southern Network. Um, her term is up, uh, there, so CSD is is uh, holding uh, elections for board members on CSDA. So now is the time is to uh, nominate uh, individuals to run for those open seats. And so what we need today, if you support. Um, Nominating Vice President Arlene, just I just we just need a a, a vote, and then we can we can take those minutes to uh, CSDA to demonstrate to him that that <coughs> Vice President Schaefer has the support of the board directors for running uh, for seat C in Southern Network. I move the issue. I'll second it. Discussion. All those in favor? I'm opposed. You, you're not going to oppose it. You're going to go along with it. Good. Okay. <laughs> Well, that motion motion to nominate Arlene for the she is kept out of the no she can she can vote no she gets to vote um, then the nomination vote is four to zero with one absence good luck when does the you. election take place thank you in June elections in June or something yeah or June fifth I thought I saw can't remember if it's oh here it is uh, should remember. Uh, I don't think it's even on this. July 14th. All votes must be received July 14th. Hmm. July. A steel day. Hmm. All right. That takes us out of the general manager's report. And item F, the engineer's report. Mr. Engineer. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Two, three things this evening is, is number one, I would like to recognize that Caitlin has worked hard to provide, a, I think, a much improved uh, CIP uh, IS report or financial information uh, report or budget. was spread out on like 50 or 60 sheets, each individual item. So I would like to recognize that she worked hard and she and her staff and they put this single page report together, which I think is much more effective and much more efficient and probably easier for you all to read. So I'm sure you took a look at that. If you have questions, I'd be in, uh, happy to answer any. Um, our next siphon phase is actually, we'd given notice to proceed and the contractor is waiting to get the permit, uh, encroachment permit to go out in the city streets and they'll start uh, field work on that project. And then we'll basically have all our siphons rehabbed except a couple that are in reasonable shape per the um, 
report assessment report that was done about three or four years ago. Uh, secondly, or second project is a manhole brick manhole rehab project. Another phase has moved forward. Same thing. We've given notice proceed and they're um, waiting for encroachment <coughs> permit from the city and then we'll measure our manholes, order the materials, and then that project will probably be done sometime in the summer as well. And the last thing I have to report is that um, next month uh, I'll be coming to you with a recommendation to make award, an award uh, for a, a consultant or engineering contract to design our Eldon uh, force main redundancy project, and that'll be coming to you next month. So uh, um, we'll be providing a, quite a lengthy presentation because there's a lot of information. Uh, it's it's going to be a little less than a $700,000 contract. And so I want to make sure that we provide you with whatever information you need and then, and then answer any questions you might have. So that'll be a big, big uh, report coming to you during the next board meeting. That concludes my report. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, interesting comment you made at the end of your report engineer's report about rainfall. It says a few minor rainfall events occurred during the past month. I assume next month the word <laughs> minor will be struck, struck from your report. Yeah, I, I say that because we did have rainfall, but I don't provide our general manager with outcomes of the calculations for a particular rainfall unless it's more than one inch of rainfall over a 24 hour period. Um, this past weekend, as an example, uh, there was actually 48 hours where we had almost an inch and a half on one of the 24-hour periods and almost two inches or so yeah. on another or something like that. But I'm looking at two or three rain gauges. So those are really what, what I do the, I'll say, I and I calculations, because we have anything less than an inch. We find there's not a whole lot of infill, in, um, inflow into our sewer system. Uh, I mean, there's some low spots, but... Uh, Steve's crew generally does a pretty good job. But yes, this next month, I will provide a report with the last couple of uh, weeks worth of rainfall. The, the news report this morning, the guy said, that they and they singled out Costa Mesa. They said Costa Mesa over the last, over the weekend or whatever the last storm was, was 3.55 inches. That's what my rain gauge showed. Is that what yours? That's amazing. That's, it's a lot of water. But I, I don't believe that was in one 24-hour period. I think it was a little more than that. I think yeah. it was over, yeah. yeah. It was over the weekend. Over the weekend. Well, a lot depends on I, in, from an I and I perspective on the pattern of rainfall. Well, that is true. If you get a rainfall storm number one, then the next day or a day and a half later, you get a rainfall number two and a number three, that fourth storm is going to have a lot of inflow just because the ground is completely saturated. So yeah. you're right, uh, um, board member Rudin. You look at some of these news. I'm the vice secretary. <laughs> vice secretary. <laughs> secretary of vice. You look at these news reports and watching over the weekend, some of these places that really got saturated. Yeah. Like the, the RV park up in wherever it was. From an insurance agent standpoint, to watch $250,000 motorhomes mm -hmm. sliding off into the abyss that. that was horrible yeah, it was floating away didn't it a couple of them actually <laughs> order of a million dollars going down. Order of down down the drain okay um let's thank you mark mr davis you're up next sir president board members uh this did you read huh? yeah. <laughs> uh, today the dow closed at 32889 it was up 72 on the day uh, year to date, uh, it's down uh, 258 or about 1%. The Fed did increase rates a quarter of a point uh, at the beginning of February. That was the eighth uh, consecutive increase. And so over, over a one, last one year period, they've raised rates 4.5%. Uh, inflation for the month of January was at 6.4%. That was down a little bit for the whole compared to the calendar year 2022, which was at 8%. Looking at your portfolio at January 31st, you were earning 1.63% on your portfolio, which was up from 0.91% uh, at the beginning of the fiscal year. We did have two purchases uh, during the month of January, two Freddie Macs we bought, five-year Freddie Macs, um, and both of those we got over 5% on. First time we've seen the 5% rates in um, a really long time. 
uh, the short-term rates continue to remain above what uh, the average rate is that we're earning on our portfolio. And many of our securities in the portfolio, when we bought them during the pandemic, everything was callable. And uh, the various federal agencies are not calling those securities because rates are rising and we bought them at a very low, at a very low rate at the time. So we're not seeing calls like we saw when uh, rates were uh, dropping. Um, just a quick update on your participation in the class portfolio that you uh, had all um, approved last year. Uh, during the month of December, we did invest uh, $830,000 with class. Um, they currently have $330 million under investment. Um, and that has grown pretty substantially in October when about the time that we had first reported to you and you approved, they had $156 million under investment. So they more than doubled that in the last few months. Uh, the daily rate on that is 4.73%. They're earning 4.69 over the last 30 days. So it's it's been a, a, a good performer, but part of that is it's brand new portfolio. And it started when rates were pretty darn high. So they don't have a lot of baggage of lower rate investments uh, included um, in their portfolio that might be pulling, pulling rates down. Uh, with that, I'm available for any questions that you may have. This is an action item. So uh, when you're done, you'll need to take action. A question on the class, um, CSDA has been pretty good about advertising, <laughs> drumming up support. Mm -hmm. Is it just special districts that are invested in that or have they gone out to other municipalities? Do, do you have any idea? I understand they were marketing it to uh, all government agencies, not just special districts. Okay. Um, um, special districts was part of it and they were in, co in uh, conjunction with the League of California Cities. So it's a combination of both. Okay, thank you, Mark. Any other questions for Mark? Right. We need a motion to approve the investment. We have a motion to approve. The Second. Okay, discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries four to zero with one absence. Thanks again, Mark. Um, Councilor, anything for us this evening? Mr. President, we don't even have an AB 361 report. That's all history now. So I'll, I'll have to find a new subject matter to talk to you about. So we are now under the new, as of tomorrow. As of tomorrow. We're under the new rules. Is that for, can I ask a question? Is that until the end of this year? Forever. Or, or is, because you yeah, said for this. A, for a few years, yeah. And then years. the law that's in place right now that takes its place sunsets also. And then we're back to the old rules that we started with in the very beginning. So now there was a, um, I heard it through OCOG last week. There is an assembly bill or a Senate, I'm not sure which house that has an exception to the, in it, but it said it was for appointed boards only. Are you familiar with that? Anybody? Mm. I wish I knew the number, but it was, Jeannie, you were shaking your head. Did you see that? I saw something similar. I'm working on my ledge report for next month, okay. so I'll I'll take a look at it. I saw a few related to this. It was they were going to stick with the old, no, they were going to stick with the revised system that we had up until tomorrow, but it said something about for appointed boards only, not for elected boards. And I, if you guys see something on that, I'd, I'd I haven't interested. seen it, but I'll be looking for it. That's fine. Thanks, Orange sir. County, Gina. Gina. That would apply to Orange County Sand District, and well, I'll, I'll see if there. I'll think through whether there are any. Yeah, difference. I was thinking it would apply to to me on OCOG as well. Appointed board. Okay. Can I ask you another question? Okay. Talk about Orange County Sand since I'm the alternate, so I would have to be there. If you're not going to be there, I would have to be in place. Is that correct? Can't, I can't I, do I, it. I think, I think, I might have... But I think it's a it's a based on a quorum. Um, they need they it, it they need to have a, you have to have a quorum physically present. Uh, other board members can participate only if they have the right excuse and provide that to the board, and the board accepts it. Staff, I suppose, could participate remotely still. Here's my next question. Okay, so I'm the alternate. If I want to watch it from home, the meeting is that permitted? You could watch it as a member of the public. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Was one of the exceptions to the to the way it's going back? If if the core if, if everybody's here, and for example, Director Eccles being out sick tonight, 
Could he Zoom? Is it was illness? One yes. Of the... Yes. Illness is a, one of the excuses. Okay. But we still have to have a quorum. He, and he'd still have to ask your permission to do that. In, in, in the meeting. Yeah. We have to yeah. get a doctor's note saying we were sick. <laughs> you say you do not have to disclose the uh, diagnosis or doctor's note, but I think it has to be some explanation to the board and the board <laughs> has to accept it. HIPAA might meeting. have some problems if you if they made you tell what was wrong with you, I'm sure. So, okay. Thanks, Alan. Thank you. All right. Uh, local meetings, Bob? Um, well, you, I think some of you probably noticed the uh, work on Baker Street. The Orange County Sand District is rehabbing the, uh, I think it's a Geisler line. Um, you know, so the, the traffic is down to one lane going westbound. And it was causing a very long backup when it came across there. I think you all know that Rob Thompson is the new general manager. Um, you know, I hired him in the in mid nineties. Uh, they're going through and, and they, they have to go through every year. They're doing a lot of orientation meetings and tours uh, because there's a major turnover generally every year on, on, that, on that board because most of them are appointed city councilmen and some, some of them have a lock on that seat and and some city councils um, have different ways of appointing and so there's a, always a, a large turnover um, the, the GWRS system is <clears throat> most of the construction is done and they're operating um, or they have the potential to operate at near 130 million gallons a day and there'll be a celebration of that uh, sometime in April uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll alert the board when that is. Um, there, there's a big issue with um, seawater level changes and or uh, tide changes um, because some of that groundwater replenishment system flow now comes from plant number two. And uh, the, lower, the lower elevations of um, Newport Beach, uh, the groundwater rises up and it comes in the mains and or the sewer laterals. And so they're studying that now to figure out because they're seeing, they're seeing um, quite, a, quite a large fluctuation and a rising level of salt. Salt going into the groundwater replenishment system is, is a cost to the Orange County Water District because that's its purpose. One of the purposes is to remove all the salt. So they're they're trying to think that through. Um, and, and there's just a lot of re rehabilitation and there's massive projects over there. Um, you know, they're building a new headquarters across the street, across Ellis, and it's a $104 million project. And there's any number, well, there's several $120 million projects over there, the dwarf foot. Uh, budget-wise, what we do here. Anyway, um, that concludes my report. Sir? Sarfa? No meeting this month. Uh, ISDOC, anything to report, Arlene, from ISDOC? Hmm, okay. Um, I went to the uh, ISDOC one with uh, Brooke Stedge. Anyway, she was really good. Environmental reporter. Did you go? No, I think so. I think I she was that. excellent. I mean, she really held your attention. This was the quarterly meeting. You mean? Yeah, it was a quarterly meeting. So it was in person type of thing. And um, then they also had uh, other speakers just acknowledging them, the new ones they had. And they talked about the Orange County Mosquito and Vector Control District. Uh, Rick Howard, um, how he is retiring, shocked me. I was surprised. I didn't realize that. I thought something was up. So anyway, that's exciting. They also uh, have um, rates with a snap trap food for the halibut waters. And I have a whole thing on this if anyone's interested in it, so I won't go through reading it. 
and then also um, went to Waco. And I was wondering too, if anyone is going to this Orange County Sand Wastewater 101 Citizens Academy, or well, they're, they're, we inviting, they're inviting the public, uh, like our CAC meeting, but it's, or like the Mesa Water Issues meeting. So they're, they've just, this is, I think the second one of those, and uh, it's for the public or public officials or anybody that wants to attend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're doing all these like, uh, our, well, like SC did, where you have numbers here, you know, you can do Thursday for this and different talks on subjects. So, okay. Anyway. So that's it. Okay. Well, there was an item on Waco. Um, as Eric Saperstein spoke about what's going on at the federal level, most of which you know. Um, he talked about the elections and um, the House and the Senate and no red wave. And um, I, th I think he, I think he said, uh, Prater Dam is near nearly funded. It's funded. But yeah, it's, it's not it's funded. Be completed. In yeah, like five years. I mean, it's going to be completed, but then they have to be there for five additional years. Yeah. So there, maintain. but the funds have been uh, they're allocated, congressionally appropriated or, or funded. And, and there was a big, there's going to be a big <laughs> uh, push again on buy American if you accept American money. Um, and the infrastructure money is being prioritized um, to disadvantaged communities. Okay. Uh, oh, anything uh, for CSDA? Uh, just on, um, I, I forgot this part on. Um, Eastock, they're having a time trying to find a secretary. And so uh, they're asking for volunteers. It seems like when I stepped out for being vice president and they thought I was going to be president, and I said, no, I'm not going to be president. I've got to. Nobody recruited. So, so everything kind of folded, some left, and they're having problems. So anyway, on CSDA, uh, we're starting in on a new year so that we're, we've got all new people involved in it. And um, so I, I sit on the Alliance, which I can't make the meeting, unfortunately, because of the funeral mem memorial. So, so I've told them that um, I feel bad about that. Even when they changed the time, it was worse, it was closer to where I had to be somewhere. So, and then I sit on the membership committee and also, uh, what else I sit on? Uh, oh, the, the same thing, the Pro professional development committee again. So, uh, and the finance committee. So, so that's what they appointed me to. Up the good work. <laughs> um, coupling from SDRMA, um, the safety, the annual safety claims day for mm -hmm. SDRMA uh, is in Sacramento on March 22nd. Um, I don't, we're not sending anybody up for that. Well, I guess we're kind of sending somebody up for that. I'll be there. Does it have to be in person? Yeah. That's Everything. what I thought. Everything is in person up there. Um, mm -hmm. I also, just real quick, last Thursday, I attended the OCOG Board of Directors meeting, of which mm. I sit on. That bill I was mentioning, I just, I've been sitting here trying to find it. It's SB 411, which allows members of legislative bodies that are appointed, that are appointed positions can remote, remotely participate. So whatever you can find. Um, also with OCOG, March 23rd is the OCOG General Assembly, which tends to be a pretty good meeting, even for OCOG. And it's going to be held at the Richard Nixon Presidential Library. <coughs> I didn't know they had meeting rooms big enough to accommodate, yeah, do they? They do. Okay. I've been there. Um, I, don't, 
I don't know if there's a char. I think there is a small charge to attend, but if you can go, it's unfortunately I'm going to be in Sacramento, but um, it is probably the best thing that OCOG does for special districts anyway. Okay. Any other meetings? Anything else, Bob? Oh, and I only forgot to mention that Orange County Sand District meetings are now going to be um, in person. I know it, what, one of the things ISDOC is looking at going back to in-person meetings, but they can't meet at MODOC, Metropolitan Water or Municipal Water District, because they're still working on the room there or something. Yeah, the, the, yeah. So people have been offering rooms to have ISDOC. And I didn't say anything about our room, but I, this this could handle an ISDOC meeting, I think, pretty easily. I've got tables, so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I'll send my thing to Nolani. I waited, because I didn't know I was gonna make it tonight. We need a new, by the way, we need a new form for the year. I don't, did the mileage change? Yeah. Did it go up? No, it's higher than that. I think it's like six, seven, is it? Sixty-seven. Huh? Just don't charge mileage. I <laughs> I didn't charge any mileage. Then you don't need a new form. <laughs> oh, the form for because we get a new form every year. Um, well, I'm using the twenty twenty form. I think. We've always known you were a little behind, Bob. Okay. Uh, no old business or new business. Um, any oral communications or director's comments? Anybody, Bob? Um, um, pension liability, I've been reading a lot of uh, places, um, you know, either paid off their pension or not. So as an information item, I, I would like to see what we save uh, because we're in the position that we're in. I, uh, you know, I don't think it'd be hard to put together, but. direction to Mark? Well, to Scott. And then he can talk to Mark. <laughs> or Caitlin. I mean, we still have a balance owed, but not very much, right? I know. So is, is that, are we at a point that we need to pay that off now or wait like we've been doing? Because I, I ask that same question every year. I think it depends on the market. All, huh? All decisions you want to pay and, but That's what I mean. I'm asking Mark's opinion. Go for it. Well, maybe that could be part of the re part of the report. As, I have a as couple. Side, I guess really a policy decision up to you, but the way that the, the PERS and your pension liability works, it always runs two years behind. But you couldn't pay it off, and you'll never see it, the liability go away in your financial statement. So to me, it really doesn't make a lot of sense to do it. At, at what point would it make sense to do it? At what amount? Uh, the, we saw in the, with the way the markets have shifted over the last couple of years, the earnings have have uh, greatly increased. And so some uh, pension liabilities or some uh, other post and benefit liabilities have flipped and now actually are super funded. Just because of the way the markets happen. So you could end up paying off saving more money, you end up becoming super funded. Now they have new secure money instead of new secure money. Uh, I see. Uh, that makes more sense. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, okay. Hey, go ahead. Okay. I just wanted to compliment uh, us at the Sanitary District for getting this uh, popular annual financial report. That was exciting. Very good. And now the next one, I'm, sure, I'm not sure if everyone will like, but I'd like to suggest that we have numbers on our pages of the staff part because it's easier to find things. Uh, I know that I sit in meetings where they just say, uh, on page 23, we have blah, 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 and that, and you could turn right to that page. Here, I just have loads of pages <clears throat> and uh, don't know what's going on. I have no pages. They're all right I here. Know, it's I much know. easier here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway, replacement. that was just a suggestion. Request. <laughs> we noted. That's um, it. A couple of quick things. Where, where can people take their, I was going to say drugs, but you can take them anywhere. What's the medication turn in 
which drugstore do you remember? Every drugstore now has them. Almost every drugstore has a place for meds. You know, Albertsons carries them. My Albertson has them. All they all carry the, the drop off boxes. They, they all have a little Rite Aid and CVS. All of that. Yes. Oh, okay. That was a request from a friend. It's a pretty good friend. Um, Scott had mentioned in his report last Friday that he did the uh, CSDA. Um, webinar on emergency preparedness. I, I did it as well. Mm -hmm. um, like we were talking earlier, <clears throat> the beginning part about cybersecurity, I thought was really well done. Um, although like the guy from SC, the security, the sergeant from SC, he, he looked pretty uptight. <laughs> Maybe because he's a cop you know, and I know how uptight cops <laughs> get. But the first guy was, was really good. I mean, he had, he had some really good tips and I, I would hope CSDA could give us like a outline or something to give to everybody. It, it was a good job. So anyway, it was well worth it. Um, and you know, Nabila, I'm, the, only, the only thing I'm really sad about, well, there's a lot of things I'm sad about you leaving. <laughs> but one of the things is Vice Secretary Uten finally figured out how to say your name and you're leaving us. So. <laughs> Again, good luck and enjoy the beach. Yes. Say yes. Your name. Go ahead. You can say goodbye to her. Abila. All right. See? How long did it take you? Well, and Mark kept reminding me. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> if there are no more communica oral communications, we will now adjourn to closed session. Performance evaluation under government code 54957. The general manager in conference with the labor negotiator 54957.6, myself and the general manager. So we will now. And Mr. President, can we just note for the record that Scott may participate in the performance evaluation part of it, but he will not be in the labor negotiations part of it. Uh, is the board wishing to have the general manager in under the performance evaluation? Uh, why don't you give us about 10 minutes yeah. to discuss and then we'll have you come in. Is that okay? Okay, so I'm going to reconvene us to open session. Um, during the closed session, we did lose one board member who had a meeting with the city. So Director Uten is, Vice Secretary Uten is not with us. Um, we did meet for items one and two as previously noted. And my report is no reportable action for that closed session. Okay. And with that, if there's nothing else, we are adjourned. Okay.